what's up everybody? I'm Grant with Stoke Your Passion. Today we're going to talk about um, some of the extended range shooting. My definition of extended range is anything past what you're comfortable holding point of wing, point of impact. So this rifle in particular is zero to 200 yards, which means anything past 325 or 350, um, I'm going to want to go ahead and calculate that correction, put the correction on the rifle, and then uh, and then take the shot from there. So we're going to talk, kind of talk about how we did that. Um, the other day we had targets strung out between 200 and about 1,100 meters or 1,100 yards um, and kind of how we got there. So with that, let's start with the rifle and kind of, kind of dispel some rumors here, at least in my mind, as to what you need to make that extended range shot. This one in particular is a Remington 700 that's chambered in 7mm Remington Magnum. Um, it's had quite a bit of work done to it to the point where it's accurized. It will shoot a half minute group um, pretty consistently, you know, with a Magnum cartridge. You know, guys ask me all the time, they're like, hey, I want to get into long range or extended range shooting. What, what rifle do I need? What caliber do I need? And, and really it's, it's what you're comfortable shooting. Um, any modern center fire cartridge, being a short action cartridge, a standard length cartridge, or a magnum cartridge. So, you know, we're talking 308, 65 Creedmoor, um, 30 out 6, 270, on into the, the 7 millimeters, the 300 Win Mags, um, stuff like that. It's going to have plenty of energy to carry to shoot targets all the way out to 11, 1200 yards, no problem. You know, shooting animals is kind of a different discussion, you know, past that. And everyone kind of has their own comfort zone as to what they're good taking a shot on, a, on an animal that they intend to harvest. So, um, but this one in particular, again, chambered in 7 millimeter Remington Magnum. Um, the first thing that I would tell people is shoot quality ammunition. Um, either off the shelf ammunition, there's plenty available with the highest BC bullet that you can find. These in particular are my hand loads. Um, shooting 168 grain burger BLD being driven about 3,100 feet per second. So they're not very hot as far as, uh, as, far as the speed out of the seven millimeter, but they are, uh, are again that high BC bullet which just carries better through the air, has less wind deflection, um, and then retains that en energy for, uh, for terminal ballistic purposes. So shoot quality ammunition. Um, the rifle in, sp in particular, any factory rifle that can shoot that minute of angle, so Ruger's making some great ones, Remington's making some great ones, Savage has some great ones out there. Any factory rifle is gonna be able to do that. Um, as long as you're comfortable shooting sub minute of angle, like you and the rifle are made it up and, and you understand how it works, then it's gonna be fine. Um, a couple things that I find very useful for taking those shots is one, um, quality optics that essentially give you a clear field of view and then have an adjustable top turret. Um, the adjustable turret is nice so you can dial the, cor the vertical correction, which isn't going to change very much, shot to shot at the same range. Um, so you can dial the vertical correction, have it on the rifle, at least vertically hold point of aim, point of impact, um, and then just be able to see clearly. The other part, I shoot off a bipod a lot. Um, you know, there's other methods to do it. You can shoot off a tripod, you can shoot off um, a pack. Any solid rest is really gonna do it for you. I really like shooting off bipods. Um, this is a Knight's Armament bipod. You know, I have a couple of Harris's. All of them are great. As long as it's sturdy, you know, it stays together during the shot, and then uh, you have the ability to really front load that bipod and put some weight into the rifle, um, it's gonna do it for you. So. Going through that, rifle and ammunition are kind of your two main upfront items. Some things that are nice to have. Um, one, I carry a Kestrel 5500 in my range bag, and I also carry this when I'm hunting in new conditions or in changing weather conditions. Essentially, what you're trying to do here is you're trying to get a measure of air density that you can put into your ballistic calculator, whatever you're doing, and then that will affect the bullet's vertical um, vertical drop or vertical compensation. And the way to think about it, either barometric pressure, humidity, temperature, elevation, all those 
are getting you to an error density so that you can essentially calculate or have something calculate for you how much resistance that bullet is going to meet as it flies through the air and then uh, essentially determine how quickly it slows down. So just we'll get into the specifics of that later, but just for reference, as humidity goes up, air density goes up. As elevation goes up, air density goes down. As temperature goes up, air density goes down. And then as barometric pressure goes down, air density goes down as well. So things to consider um, while you're calculating that vertical correction, whatever it might be. Um, range finders, you know, there are ways to measure a target and then um, essentially determine the range of that target through the mill dot relation formula or whatever you, whatever you prefer to do. It's pretty darn easy just to range it and then uh, use that in your calculation. Um, a note on these things, this one in particular is a Kilo 2000 made by SIG. Um, I like this range finder, you know, on a bright clear day, on a harder target like a whole hillside, some big rocks, whatever it is, it'll range accurately out to about 1400 yards um, on animals, on elk, on deer, on pronghorn, whatever it is, you know, 8900 is about as far as you can pick one of those up. So more discussion on how to use this range finder a little bit later. Um, but yeah, get, get essentially the furthest rated or the longest ranging range finder that you can afford. Um, it'll really help you out and just make everything go quicker. You're gonna want a rear rest of some sort that essentially slides underneath the stock and helps you stabilize either off a pack, off a bipod, whatever it is, and then stabilize the rear, the rear of your rifle. You can get as expensive as you want with these things. This is an old sock filled with airsoft pellets and tied in a knot. Um, probably the lightest and cheapest version of, uh, of a rear stabilizer that I've, I've found. And then lastly, you know, you can buy a dedicated ballistic calculator, but unfortunately this day and age, these phones are tied essentially to everybody's hip. I use Ballistic AE, it's a great app. I think it was 14 bucks. Um, and it does essentially everything I need to do and it does it very quickly. So again, we'll get into how to use each one of these devices and a little bit more specificity here to come, but, uh, but that's kind of the overview of what we got for now.